So life is getting more expensive. Inflation is going up. And maybe you already know this because the 5% salary increase that you got at work this year felt like more than normal, but the prices at the grocery store are going up way more than that. Or every time you see the prices at the gas station, they're up a few cents or more every single day. Gas prices are hurting our wallet. Tonight, the price of gas and goods is soaring. In Toronto, $1.80 a liter. I don't think we can drive anymore. And your eyes are not playing tricks on you. This is what's happening. And prices are rising at a faster rate than our wages are, which is inflation in a nutshell. And more specifically, inflation is when things increase in price over time and it decreases the value of the money that we have today. Also, these prices are really high because in the US, consumer prices hit their highest level in 40 years when we hit that 7.5% inflation mark. And Canada's not far behind at 5.1% either. And on top of our gas, food, and housing prices going up, coffee also hit its 10 year high. Now, coffee might not sound like as big of a deal as our gas, transportation, food, and shelter costs, but it's a pretty good indicator of how things are going because so many people buy a cup of coffee in the morning. Now, if you've recently switched to making your coffee at home because of all these price increases going on right now, then it's time to pour yourself a cup because we're going to be going super deep into inflation today. Now, what inspired us to make this video in the first place is a tweet that Jack Dorsey posted, who's the former CEO of Twitter and CEO of Block, a few months ago. And he said, hyperinflation is going to change everything. It's coming. Now, will we actually see hyperinflation here? That's what it got people wondering. Now, the answer to that right off the bat is probably not. Probably not. And some different economists have even said that it was irresponsible of him to suggest that it could be coming here, considering that there's no cases of hyperinflation around the world as of today. But what would hyperinflation look like if it were to come? That's what we're going to get to next. Before we get into hyperinflation, I think it's really important for us to be on the same page on inflation first. So technically, the ideal situation, if we're looking at the economy, would be a place where the number of goods that people want to buy is equal to the amount of people that actually want to buy them, aka supply equals demand. Now here's the thing, we're never really at that exact point because prices are either too high or they're too low and we're often kind of in the middle trying to balance things out. Now a little bit of price inflation is actually a good thing for the economy though. We typically hear around 1-2%, to that's what we should expect to see and that's why that's the yearly, typical yearly salary increase that people see at work, aka the cost of living adjustment as inflation goes up. What this touch of inflation does is it one, gives some space to avoid deflation and two, and most importantly, it encourages people to save their money. Think about it this way. If you have $1,000 and you know that because of inflation, it's going to be worth 2% less next year in buying power, that means that your $1,000 is going to be worth $980 next year. Not a big deal for some people, but I'm sure you'd rather spend that money today or you'd rather invest it instead of losing it. And listen, this is what the economy relies on, right? That touch of inflation, that's what's pushing people to spend, consume, and continue the cycle. Without that touch of inflation, people might be more likely to save their money because it's not losing value. And if people aren't spending, then that means the economy's slowing down. And if that happens, that means businesses are selling less, workers are gonna lose their jobs, prices are gonna fall, and that's where we see deflation. And guess what? Now you know why inflation is such a big deal. So now, generally speaking, inflation rates have actually gone down and have been pretty low overall because our world has become more efficient. But then enter the pandemic. Basically, it's these big and unpredictable events that really throw off our entire system. So governments decided to start printing money, and I mean a whole bunch of it. The US government in particular printed 80% of all US dollars in existence in the last two years. And yes, that means that 80% of all US dollars didn't exist before January 2020. When more money is printed, the more that our current currency that's already in circulation becomes devalued, which means that it costs more money to buy something. So let's look at an example like this. Fancy cars. Picture your Ferrari, your Aston Martin, Rolls Royce. Why are they so special? Now, obviously they're extremely expensive for one, but also the manufacturers only create a certain amount of them, meaning that even all the rich people or people who could actually afford those cars can't even get their hands on one if they wanted to. The same thing goes for money. When a lot of people could get their hands on money, like when more money is being printed, that's the purpose, then it means that the current dollars that we have right now aren't as special and they're not worth as much. So our currency isn't as valuable right now, but so what? Like we said before, people went out and actually started spending more money. And when you're spending more money, less products and goods are available, supply goes down, which increases the prices more. And on top of that right now, we're also seeing a lot of supply chain issues. So essential products, oil, gas, 
all those different things that businesses either sell or they need to be able to get their goods into stores to sell, like gas prices, right? All companies need transportation to get stuff into their stores. When those issues come into play too, it impacts supply even more, supply goes down, price increases go up even more. Now this really ties into what's even included in calculating the specific inflation number in the first place. Now at a high level, it's measured by the different essential goods that most people need to just function in day-to-day -day life. The main source of this number is the CPI or consumer price index. Again, there's a few other different sources of inflation, but this is the one that's referred to the most. So picture the CPI as a basket that's filled with a few different costs like housing, transportation, food, medical, and a few others. They then take a weighted average of all of those costs combined and compare it on a month to month basis. So if in January, the overall basket costs about $200 and then in February, the whole basket of what you'd spend in a month costs about $250, well, that would be a pretty high inflation jump in one month. Now, something I wanted to mention on this because we see it in our comments all the time is people saying that inflation actually feels a lot higher than the number that they are reporting. So why is this? There is some criticism of the CPI inflation measure in general, mostly because they only, remember how I said that it's a basket of a few different costs? They only add different costs to that equation once it becomes a staple for the majority of people. But in the times we're living in, when a product that didn't even exist a year could be a big piece of your life today, hello innovation, obviously there's changes happening all the time, so it might not be completely accurate. But even still, the CPI is a number that you're gonna hear the most often, and that's what people are referring to. So on top of the regular inflation that we usually see, Right now, inflation is even higher at 7.5% in the US and 5.1% in Canada. Why? Basically, we're in this unique situation where all these factors are kind of hitting us all at once, causing inflation to rise higher and higher than usual. And I guess the big or main question that remains is, will this cause hyperinflation? Well, we've seen hyperinflation before in other countries where people literally have to bring trillions of dollars just to buy basic goods. And you know, going back to that original coffee example, imagine if during the time it took you to drink that cup of coffee, it doubled in price. Crazy? Yes, but it happened, right? And when the situation gets really bad, people literally can't afford anything and their currency becomes worthless globally, which again is another story for another day, but you get the point. Hyperinflation is like inflation on steroids. Right now, we're talking about 7.5% price increases. What about 50? What about 1,000%? Literally, this is the difference between a cup of coffee going from $2 to $2.15 to instead going from $2 to $22. Listen, if 1,000% sounds intense, that's because hyperinflation is intense. The actual definition of hyperinflation is when inflation is over 50% or more year over year. Now, 7.5% obviously isn't anywhere near that 50%, and the US and Canada have actually never been anywhere near those levels, plus current CPI data shows that we're nowhere near those levels, but just for one second, what if we were? Like we mentioned, we have seen hyperinflation before around the world in Germany, in Turkey, in Spain, Venezuela, and then also in Zimbabwe most recently in 2008. Now, in this case, the monthly inflation rate was said to be about 79 billion percent per month. Yes, 79 billion percent, obviously way higher than what we're seeing right now at the 7.55% range. At the time, prices were doubling every 24 hours and they had to keep issuing higher and higher bills, dollar bills as well. So there was a $100 million bill created and then a few days later, a $200 million bill. Now also people were stopped from withdrawing more than about $500,000 from their bank account at the time. And remember, that wasn't that much money then. And with all of that going on, currency was clearly being devalued super quickly, prices were increasing at these crazy rates and people's savings meant pretty much nothing and they couldn't even really get to their money in most cases anyways. Now once this cycle really gets started, there's not many ways that you can stop it other than doing a complete overhaul of the currency and repricing everything. And let's also not forget that in this case, what kind of kickstarted this all in the first place was a lot of money being printed. So that's what hyperinflation would, or at least what it could look like if it were to happen here. And it would definitely ruin all of the savings that you have going on right now. But let's actually get back to the high inflation that we are seeing that's nowhere near that hyperinflation example, but the high rates that we are seeing. Like we said already, inflation running high can obviously be a bad thing sometimes, but at the same time, it can also be used specifically for governments to pay off their debt, just like people could. Let's keep this one super high level and think of it this way. If the money that you have now is less valuable than the money you initially borrowed and you start to pay that back with this less valuable money, 
that's a good thing for you. And when we look at it on a government level, the US has some of the highest levels of debt in the world. So it makes these high inflation rates a little less intense for them. Now to end this off, there are a few things that the Federal Reserve is doing right now to try and stop these high inflation rates from growing. So one of those things is that they're buying less bonds. When they're buying less bonds, it means that they're putting less money in the economy. And we know when that happens, prices are gonna go up. So they're not doing as much as that. And they're also raising interest rates, which we talked about before. Again, when interest rates rise, it means that people are more inclined to save their money instead of spend it. So it's actively putting prices down lower. So last but not least, what should you actually be doing right now? Well, one of the biggest things in our opinion is actually holding less cash and savings because you're losing more on it right now. Instead, you should be investing your money consistently. And remember, when prices are low, that's amazing for buying. Also, Look into, look into figuring out whether you could capitalize on actually switching jobs and finding a job that actually pays you more in an effort to actually close out that price inflation gap. Now, if you haven't checked out one of our last videos on how people are leveling up in their jobs, making more money, beating the system, highly recommend you check that out next. And yeah, as usual, make sure you like down below, make sure you subscribe right there in the corner. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out next door and we will be back. You know the vibes, let's go.